I think your look said it all. As the crowd gets cranked up for the introduction of I, I, you, mean, Wolak. you mean I can't say a star is born? He wasn't born. No. After the horrors of judging last week with Lauren Williams, Tom Shrek, Steve Weisfeld, Julie Letterman will be working this fight. Polish born, then came to Jersey, and now these fans who have supported the likes of Adamak and others ready to explode for Wola. Respect the dissidents, please. Obey my commands. Respect the bomb. Above all, protect yourself at all times. God bless you. Touch him up. No, Double think, S, Stevie Smoger, your referee. I think this could be a great fight. You got the right referee, Stevie Smoger. He's been involved in countless terrific fights, and there's a reason for it. He lets guys fight. A long layoff for Rodriguez after all the hard decisions to swallow and now facing the pressure of Pavel Wolak. Well, you won't have to look for Wolak. He's right there in your grill, and he will be there all night long unless you get him out of there. I don't think it's going to be enough for Rodriguez to box on the outside. He's not going to have time. I think he's going to have to hurt Wolak with his best punch. Rodriguez has a good straight right hand. He's going to have to hurt him, slow him down before he gets close. Otherwise, I think Wolak is going to be too big, too strong, and too much. Just come square right through that front door. Let's not forget now, Warlock is a much bigger guy, entire career. Junior middleweight, never below 153. Rodriguez, his entire career between Junior Welter and Welter Day, never above 148 until tonight. Rodriguez comes in the heaviest of his career, 153. Warlock has been as heavy as 161. So again, much bigger, stronger guy. You know, Rodriguez cuts guys with his punches, Joe. He just something about the talk on his punches. He cuts a lot of guys, and Wolock gets cut over that right eye. Scar tissue over the right eye of Wolock. You know, to that point of Rodriguez cutting him, just noticing here in the first round the two different glove choices here because Rodriguez is wearing Reyes gloves. Good point there, Joe. Because those are the gloves that a lot of people think are tighter gloves and cutting gloves. Gloves that do get to your skin a little bit and break you open. Wolak is a Metro New York fighter in North Jersey wearing uh, New York's own Everlast. A great company that's been around for many years. And there's a body shot. For Wola, if you're the bigger guy, don't just go to the head. Go to the body of the smaller guy to bring the smaller guy down. Now, talking about the lineage of boxing history in this area, Wolak trains in Bergen, New Jersey, same town as the Cinderella Man back in the day. Wolak has been cut over that right eye in six different fights. And you can see Wolak likes to be a billy goat. He gets in there with his head. And head comes through that front door first. And then plenty of punches, short and tight and volume. And again, Joe, on the inside, the inside fighter is Wolock. Rodriguez is an outside fighter. Good jab, nice straight right hand. He's got to get a little room, but he doesn't have time to get off. He's got to get off right away. And I'm going to say it again. He's going to have to hurt Wolock, get his respect, slow him down a little bit. End of one. New manager and new trainer for Delvin Rodriguez. They love Stan Hoffman and Lou Fusco, but feels confident with the new direction his career is going with Fernelli Feliz, who is now working Delvin's corner, was a pro heavyweight with 23 wins. You know, things had just gotten to the point with Delvin where something had to change. Uh, it was just bad karma, bad things happening, decision after decision. And he still thinks the world of Hoffman and Fusco. In fact, Stan Hoffman is a longtime manager here ringside tonight there's a combination from Rodriguez was able to place that right uppercut against Pavel 
Well, Stan Hoffman's still involved in Rodriguez's career as an advisor now. His, his health has been a little bit poor, Stan. He's feeling better now, but wasn't able to do the full management chores, so decided to just be an advisor. And right now, Rodriguez, I think, deciding to use the uppercut instead of the straight line. And I think it's a good decision by Rodriguez. Yeah, with that head coming low and straight in from Pava. Yeah, he's got a guy coming in who's crouching, who's leaning forward a little bit. You can't catch him with the straight right hand. He gets underneath it. He gets in too fast. But the uppercut can catch him. So Rodriguez making a little adjustment early in the second round to that right uppercut. And that's going to be the punch, or has to be the punch, I think, to slow down Wolock if Rodriguez is going to have a chance here. But there's one problem, Joe. One punch is probably not going to be enough against the good shin and the bigger Wola. He's gonna probably have to make it two punches, Rodriguez. He doesn't do that all the time. He hits you with one right hand. If he hits Wolock with that right uppercut, he's gonna have to put the left hook with it. It's gonna take more than one good shot to slow down this big Wola. He just keeps coming and coming and coming. Now, Delvin had a moments of success here. There was a left uppercut to the body also in the mix there, but there's Wolak right in front of him again. Sometimes fighters use the wrong namesakes on their trunks or for nicknames. Wolak, I think, has the one that fits, the Raging Bull, on his trunks. He's looking at Gore Delvin here. You know, he gets into the mix there, Teddy, and he's got the head coming forward. He's got lefts and rights. He has forearms and shoulders. Everything's coming at you on the inside there. And again, I think Wolak, the one thing he's not doing enough of, he's coming in, he's moving his hands, but he's not going to the body enough. I think he should be going to that thin body of the smaller man. And give credit to both guys. Wolak just moved his head. You know, he acts like a catcher, but he moves his head a little bit. He's not eating everything. He's making a lot of miss, and Rodriguez has done a pretty good job defensively, too. Also landed a left hand to the body moments ago, and now getting a two-punch combination in the mix as Pavel keeps coming forward, but Delvin had a pretty good round here at the end of two between Rodriguez and Wolak. adjustment to the right uppercut. There it is. He needs to put the left hook behind it a little faster and a little shorter. But a good adjustment that second round by Rodriguez. I like it. They have packed him in here to the Roseland Ballroom. I Rodriguez from Connecticut. Wolak from North Jersey. Originally from Poland. And that ethnic pride showing through tonight here in Midtown Manhattan as a boisterous crowd here to support him. Rodriguez trying to start with a two-punch combination. Got off to a good start in round two. Wolak, you get the same thing time and time again. Here's a good right hand from Delvin. Yeah, a little distance, a little room. That's what Rodriguez needed, and he took advantage with a quick short right hand. And, and now a combination on the inside. The uppercut was in the mix again, Teddy. And it needs to be in the mix. That's the punch that's going to work with a guy who's crouching. And again, you don't get a lot of room and a lot of time with Wolak. He closes the gap fast. So you got to throw quick, short, snappy punches. Guess what? Those are the kind of punches Rodriguez throws. There's another right hand from Delvin. Wolak sitting right in front, an available target. Yeah, Rodriguez doing a good job with that right uppercut. Every once in a while, also touching him to the body with the left hook. But again, Rodriguez needs to put the hook with the uppercut. One is not going to stop Wolak. Two might slow him down, though. Little redness around the right eye we talked about. That right eye that has a lot of scotches to, of Wolak. Three-punch combination lands for Rodriguez. He's having a heck of a round here. Wolak still doing much the same, working on the inside. Four punches rain in from the pole. Yeah, but you know what I'm seeing? I'm seeing the experience of Rodriguez. He's been in the Indeed. world title fight. He's not collapsing. He's not panicking. He's dealing with the pressure with an intellect, with a nice, calm mind, and a good plan. Remember, he's doing it a weight class up, moving up to 154, coming off a long layoff in which his motivation was questioned. Did he still want to be a part of a sport that had hurt him the way it had with bad decisions? 
You know, Rodriguez was inactive at this last fight. It's been a year since he fought, but guess what? I think it was a good year. He needed a rest. He did. After five straight, six, 12 round decisions with good fighters, and one of them for the world title. That rest that Rodriguez gets, that he got over the last year, I think it's serving him a little bit. Boy, that's a ton of pressure, though, to deal with. This it guy is. just keeps coming. And it's only the third round, and you got to do it for seven more. Unrelenting. Rodriguez will have to earn every single inch of it. Pavel constantly coming forward. Rodriguez needs room to punch, so what do you do? Push the guy off a little bit, get room, throw that right hand. That's exactly what Rodriguez did with Wolock. And there, the uppercut, you got a guy leaning forward, bring that uppercut up, bring his head up. But again, Rodriguez is going to need that left hook. There is Pavel Wolak coming out to face the former title challenger. Wolak hoping to secure an opportunity. We heard word before this bout tonight that an impressive win tonight will launch him into a world title opportunity potentially this fall. Let's look at Teddy's scorecard, see where things stand. Delvin puts that uppercut in the midst of a combination. Two rounds to one for Rodriguez so far, says Teddy. Don't forget, Rodriguez has lost three of his last four, but not coming in here in bad mental condition. He knows that those fights were close. At least two were controversial. All three of those fights, very close. A split decision and a majority decision. So Rodriguez has the confidence, even though he's lost three of his last four. And he has, as we said earlier, the experience to deal with this kind of situation. Touching Wolak with more consistency now. If it comes down to who has the better chin, that's going to probably be Wolak. Rodriguez has been knocked out one time, but it's not going to come down. In Rodriguez's mind, it can come down to who has the better chin. He can't leave his chin out there. He has to be good defensively, and he's been pretty good at getting away from a lot of the big shots so far. It was a stunner the one time that he was taken out. It was Jesse Feliciano did it back in 07 on Friday night fights. A big right hand started that onslaught. And Joe Rodriguez has come off the floor two times to win, so he shows that great heart. And let's not forget, Wolock, well, his chin has been dented a little bit. He's been on the floor before. So there's hope. There's hope for Rodriguez to affect him. Right uppercut on the inside by Wallach moments ago. And you see how he uses that head at times. Billy Goading on the inside. Rodriguez trying to keep him off his chest and create some space. Yeah, Wallach does a pretty good job of using those forearms as well as Larry Zonka used to do years Indeed. ago with the Miami Dolphins. He's catching when he takes steps in with that right uppercut from Rodriguez. Now he sends off a left uppercut of his own. Never hesitates. No, but Rodriguez is pretty smart. So you can get caught with Warlock as you step back. Look, that's what Warlock's looking to do. Force Rodriguez out of the pocket and then catch him as he goes back. Rodriguez is smart, though. He doesn't want to go out of the pocket. When he does, he tries to go out real quick. See, look how quick Rodriguez gets out of that pocket. Then he tries to set up real fast. Good work right now by Warlock as he's mixing in body shots, too. You can see that swelling around the right eye. A right hand lands from Delvin, and then a two-punch combination. Good action throughout as we come to the end of round number four, and they trade. Team USA going for the big prize in the Women's World Cup, and here in New York, two very hungry veterans trying to put themselves in position for the big prize at 154 pounds. Pavel Wolwick, 29 and one, Ring Magazine number eight. Delvin Rodriguez, a former title challenger at 147, looking for something big at 154 now. Yeah, he's looking for something big. He's looking for a big right hand. That's what he's looking for, big. And he knows he has to catch Wolock, the bigger man, with it before Wolock gets close. And that's exactly what Rodriguez did to start this round. 
Some space now for Rodriguez as he tries to land that left uppercut. 38-38, says Teddy. That fourth round was close and competitive, but the pressure of Wolak earned it on Teddy's scorecard. Well, these bodies you alluded to at the last round, they're earning every bit of their pay tonight. And we applaud them for it. We just hope that the judges, and I have confidence they will, that they earn their pay tonight because we need good judging tonight because not all these punches are landing. You got to look. Not just look at the pressure. Not just look at the arms that are flailing, the gloves that are buzzing by. But you got to look at what's landing and what's landing clean. Because quantity is going to come from Pavel Wolak. Pressure exactly. and aggression is going to come from Wolak. But accuracy and effectiveness may come from Rodriguez. That's the challenge for Shrek Weisfeld and Julie Letterman, our three judges here, as you saw the CompuBox numbers. Exactly. Don't get caught up with the amount of punches, with the blur of punches. Look at what's landing. Look at what's effective. Rodriguez is not going to match Wallach, and he's not matching him with punch numbers. But he's trying to land hard, effective punches. Boy, this Wallach gets me tired. Boy, unbelievable motor in him, isn't it? But he never he's... stops coming forward. But Joe, look at his legs. Look how square he is. He's coming forward, but look at his legs. They're so square. Absolutely. And our cameraman, our director, our producer, all our guys in the truck, as always, do a great job, and they give you that picture right away. When he gets square like that, that means he gives you a lot of target, a lot of surface to hit. He's as flat as could be. That right foot is all the way up towards that left foot, shoulder to shoulder with his opponent and just throwing punches. The thing is, he tries to smother you, take that room away from you, take that air out of the room. So you don't have a chance to throw. Rodriguez knows it though. As soon as Rodriguez gets a little room, he tries to get off. This is a tough round to score. Very tough round to score. Good fight throughout. Well, this week in boxing, the news came out that the judges in the Laura Williams fight admonished. And tonight, Tom Schreck, Steve Weisfeld, and Julie Letterman have a tough task you know, the scoring this fight, Wolick and Rodriguez. You know, Joe, the government comes out and they look out for the baseball players. When there's something wrong, they come out, they have an investigation. Someone has to look out for the fighters because the baseball players is a great sport, but nobody's punching them in the face. These guys are going in the ring. They're taking a chance with their life. They're putting themselves on the line. Somebody has to look out for them. I'm glad that we're exposing the judges. We're looking at it. We're shining a light on them. We're making sure they behave right. Three good ones here in New York for this main event. Yeah, I like the ones here tonight. And again, they're going to be tested a little bit. These fighters are being tested. Well, they're going to be tested at the end of the night if nobody gets knocked out. Let's show you the copy box numbers for the average punches per round. 103 is Pavel Wolik's average. That is an extraordinary number. Well, the body work, I talked about it early, Joe, that Wolak wasn't going there enough. Guess what? He's going there now. And that's a good way of wearing down anybody, especially a smaller guy. And again, Wolak does a good job keeping those hands up, moving his head a little bit, but he leans forward. That uppercut from Rodriguez hasn't been there the last two rounds. He's going to need it again. Now, Wolak's just looking to rough him up in the corner here. Right hand got over the top, and now there's a combination from Rodriguez that included a body punch and a short right hand, and Pavel Wolak comes right back. So look at the little things Wolak does. When he misses the left hook and it goes behind the neck of Rodriguez, he pulls him forward out of position, off bounds a little bit, so he can hit him with something else, so Rodriguez is not set. So, you know, it's not just a bull in there. There's a little range in there, too. We'll, we'll uh, give him credit for that. You know, there's some technique. There's some digging in there. Short right hand landed flush from Pavel. Remember what you said earlier tonight when I introduced Stevie Smoker as the referee? You don't even see him anywhere near these two fighters. He's just letting them work and work and work. 
He knows how to be a ref. He knows what a ref's there for, and he knows what a referee is not there for. That's why we like him. That's why we get good fights with him. And we got a real good one here, as we thought we would, as we hope we would. Uppercut by Rodriguez as Pavel continues to pour it on. And it what a pace here in round number six. And that right eye of Pavel. Aurora keeps getting redder. Hasn't opened yet, though. There's that right eye of Wolock starting to swell, starting to close, and it opened up a little bleeding there. The cut man in the corner, Darren Antola, worked on it a little bit. You know, we talked about earlier about the new trainer, Pinelli Police, for Rodriguez. Let's not forget the experienced, tremendous trainer in the corner of Wolock, Tommy Brooks. Round number seven. Outstanding main event here with a lot on the line. Pavel Wolek trying to maintain his lofty status as a top 10 contending junior middleweight. Rodriguez, Delvin coming back off the year layoff, trying to right so many wrongs that have gone against him in recent years. Scheduled for 10, we will be commercial free from here on out. So stay with us and enjoy as Rodriguez going backwards, able to land the four punch combination. That round was a dominating round for Wolek on my scorecard. This is a good beginning of a round for Rodriguez. The kind of beginning he had to have after that last round. You don't want this guy to get more momentum than he has. I mean, look, Wolock has momentum coming out of the locker room. I mean, he's already coming like a snowball down a hill. But you don't want to get him going any more than he gets going on his own in the ring. You want to slow him down a little bit. Make him respect you a little bit. Don't give him two, three rounds in a row. And that's exactly what Rodriguez is trying to do. Not give Wolak two rounds in a row. You know, moments ago, Delvin landed a left hook. And you can see noticeable swelling now around that right eye that's more severe on Pavel Wolak. Yeah, that right eye's starting to close. In fact, it's swelling now above the brow as well, Teddy. Yeah, but the only good thing for Wolak if it closes, it's the right eye, not the left eye. It'd be worse for him if it was the left eye, because that's on the side of the power punch, the right hand of Rodriguez. He wants to see that power punch. Great he note. wants to see that right hand. Absolutely. It's the left hook that will be an issue oh, as boy. it stands now. That eye looks like a golf ball now. Doesn't it? On Wolak. Oh, look at this, Teddy. All of a sudden, within a matter of 10 seconds, it's going Tyson-esque or Rachman-esque. Look at that. Look at the amount of swelling around that eye. Unbelievable. And, and, and don't think we're the only ones who saw it. Steve Smoker saw it. He's calling for the doctor to look at it when this round ends. Smoker will bring that doctor over as soon as this round ends. And he's trying to make them count. He's got to make the shots count, Rodriguez. Well, another left hand to that right eye of Rolex. The doctors will undoubtedly get involved here at the end of round number seven. This crowd will explode if this fight is stopped. Non-stop pressure and action from Rolex. And yet Rodriguez sharpshooting that eye. But you gotta keep using that jab, all right? Huh? Hey, good. Huh? Hey, look, you gotta keep the heat on this guy, boss. Keep the heat on him. He's ready to fall. Hey, look, he's attacking his legs. He's making a little adjustment. That's experience. That's okay. intellect. He's on the line more on that left side where the swelling is and a little less on the right side.
good job by the doctor, good job by the referee. They know that this is not opera. They know this is boxing. They know that they can allow this guy to go on with a swollen eye. And it's not to the point where they have to stop it. Don't get me wrong. I want to fight a protected too. But it is fighting. It is boxing. You must understand that. This referee understands it within the realm that he needs to, and so does the doctor. They're going right at it. They open up round eight training here as the fight goes on. Steve Smoger, the referee, had one of the great quotes in between rounds there when he says, it's ugly, but I don't mind. 67-67 on Teddy's scorecard. We got a thriller here in New York. Will the eye hold up? Will Rodriguez hold up to Wolak's pressure? And again, it's the same thing. Delvin knows he has to get those punches off before the gap is closed by Wolak. But he tucks up once he gets in close. Look at what Rodriguez does. He covers up real good, gets into that defensive show, and every once in a while looks to get a little room. Looks for a spot where maybe he can counter. And there's the spot he's looking for. Absolute grotesque swelling around the right eye of Wolak, and he fights on. It's as if somebody shoved a hand melon under his skin. Remember when George Foreman fought Joe Frazier? He pushed him a little bit. He shoved him back a little bit to get room. That's exactly what Rodriguez is trying to do to this Joe Frazier in front of him. Push him back, get a little room. You talk about earning a paycheck. My, oh my. The midst of round eight, and the beat goes on. Delvin looks for a bit of separation. Wolak continues to pepper on the inside. You know, I've been talking about the uppercut for Wolak, or for Rodriguez, all night long. It's there against Wolak, leading forward. But now, the uppercut might be there on the inside for Wolak, because Rodriguez, from all that pressure, all those body shots, look at him. He's leaning forward a little bit. That uppercut might be there for Wolak. Short left hand on the inside from Wolak moments ago. And every so often, he will test that body. There's the there it is, the right uppercut on the inside. Tried to lift him, then a short, chopping right hand. And that uppercut is becoming more and more available for Wolak now with Rodriguez. And then Rodriguez creates a little space and gets off two punches. A one-eyed fighter, extreme swelling, and yet continued pressure applied. They take it right to the bell with two rounds to go. Uh, if you hear a little extra clapping, that's me. Get on that shit on that eye. Work that eye. Thing it's supposed to be making tough decisions that others won't 
to fight on. Can you imagine if one of those heavyweights like David Hay, any of them, fought with this attitude, Please. with this kind of commitment against Klitschko? They would be the champion. Klitschko wouldn't be the champion. There's a short right hand by Rodriguez. Got a little room. He knew what to do with that room, Rodriguez. And then a left hook against that swollen right eye. But still, Pavel right inside the kitchen with short right hands. And now a combination from Rodriguez. The uppercut gets in the mix. Rodriguez taking a little control here. Wolak still landing a short right hand by the pole. Joe, the bigger, stronger guy, Wolak, the more experienced guy, the fire-tested guy, the hungry guy, who's had a lot of bad decisions go against him. That might be Rodriguez. He's acting like it right now. He's acting like a guy that knows what to do. Two big right hands chopping down. Tremendous round for Rodriguez. You know, we see the aggression of Wallach. Everyone sees it. But right now, Rodriguez is seeing the opportunities inside that aggression. The opportunities inside the recklessness of that aggression. And that's what a good fighter sees. All the hard punches, the clean punches, this round have been Rodriguez. I hope they're both drinking a lot of water. You get dehydrated in a fight like this, you have to drink water. Oh, how about that three punch combination that improved the right uppercut? And then a left hook right on that swollen eye, and Rolex shakes it off. He took a left hook on the hematoma, shakes it off, and throws punch after punch after punch. Well, that's where the bigger guy helps you a little bit. It not only helps you when you dish it out, it helps you when you take it. You absorb better when you're the bigger guy. And he's absorbing. This is great stuff here in New York. Just listen in to their final instructions. Yeah, the hacker commercial. Let's stay here. Yo, you ready for this? Ready? Let's go. Let's take this fucking round like we want it, man. Come on, man. You understand? Let it go. taking every second on that stool. Pavel, no, no. one eye, and getting after it again. Tenth and final round. I have it dead even. Teddy's scorecard through nine. Dead even, says Teddy. 86-86. Exactly the way it should be. The way we thought it might be. And sure as heck the way it has been. Promoters should give both these guys a bonus. Oh, and a rest. To think some of the paychecks that are cashed in this sport with guaranteed contracts and lackluster efforts, and to then see these two warriors getting after it with so much on the line, the future of their careers. You know, usually Rodriguez gets, this is a funny thing, usually he gets hit with right hands. He stands on the outside, he throws a jab, little's too straight up, and he gets hit with right hands. 
with a pressure guy like this, you figure it would be maybe the same thing. But it actually helped him because he couldn't stand on the outside and stand up. He had to be on the inside and slip a little bit. He had to get small a little bit. You know, he had to crouch a little bit. So really, in some ways, fighting with a pressure guy, you thought he would be a bad guy. It took away one of his flaws of getting hit with a right hand on the outside because it forced him to pay attention to that in close. It didn't allow him to be in that leisurely position where he throws a slow jab. Nothing leisurely about tonight. Do you reward the non-stop pressure of Wolak or the sharp shooting effective accuracy of Rodriguez that caused the damage to that eye? Which way do you go if you're a judge? Well, that's the right question, Joe. And I hope they have the answers because he's always had the answers. Good short left hand by Pavel. Wolak's trying to make a run here, but so far this round has been Rodriguez. Exactly what you talked about. The more concise, the more precise, the cleaner, more effective punches by Rodriguez. And you saw it again. He doesn't just get lucky in there. He creates room, Rodriguez, then he gets off. He doesn't just throw. If he just throws, there'd be no room. He waits for the right spot, gets a little room, then he throws. The time count clap is going to come. And when it does, expect an eruption. Well, so far, if it comes down to this round, I'm going to tell you, it's Rodriguez. It's Rodriguez. He landed the cleanup. Look at this. Rodriguez landing well in the final moments. Pavel comes on. Big swing to the bell. Oh, was that brilliant. Was that absolutely brilliant. Better than advertised. Welcome back to New York, a main event that delivered everything it was supposed to and more. A look back at Pavel Wolak, Delvin Rodriguez. Wolak, number eight in the world, bringing pressure all night long. Rodriguez, sharp shooting, combinations, and right hands. The swelling started in round number four around the right eye of Wolak, and it would continue to worsen. Going to extremes in round number seven, time and time again, referee Steve Smoker checked with the doctors. The ringside position said he fights on, and boy, Teddy did he. They sure did. They both did. And you know what? The rounds that were obvious were obvious for Rodriguez. At these late rounds, where he got a little room and he scored the harder, clearer punches. I'm not worried about those rounds. I'm worried about the rounds early on that were not as obvious, that the judges were able to use their talent and see who won those rounds. Punch of the Night's brought to you by Just For Men. Hair color, the ninth round, uppercut. Watch this. There it is, getting in the mix of that combination. Nice right uppercut, the left hook was not with it. Hopefully, Rodriguez doesn't say, I wish I had that left hook back. Well, remember what Rodriguez has said. You work your butt off, you give a good performance, you know you won the fight, you don't get the decision. I don't know that he won this fight, but once again, it's one of these Delvin Rodriguez fights that comes down to this. Teddy, your scorecard. Well, you're gonna see it right there. One point lead for Rodriguez now. You see in that fifth round, it was an even round. That round could have went either way. It could have went to Wolock. If it goes to Wolock, then it's a draw. For the official decision, we send it up to the ring to David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it out there for both of these warriors. After 10 rounds of action here at the Roseland Ballroom, we go to the judges' scorecards. Tom Shrek scored this bout 97-93 for Rodriguez.
Steve Weisfeld and Julie Letterman both scored this contest. 95, 95, we have a majority draw. A majority draw between Wolak and Rodriguez as Tom Shrek favored Rodriguez 97-93. Obviously, Shrek saw what we were talking about in terms of the effective clean punching, the accuracy of Delvin Rodriguez. This was a spectacular fight. Look, I don't have any complaint about this night. This was a terrific night on everybody's part, a terrific night on the fighters' part, a terrific night on the promoters' part, on the matchmakers' part, and on the fans' part for coming and seeing and embracing this fight. And I think the judges did a good job. I could see a draw, and again, I could see Shrek's scorecard where he was able to see those clean punches, and I give him credit for that when he had a guy there that was coming forward as much as Warlock, and a lot of judges would not have seen those kind of punches. A good night, all in all. We're gonna take a very short break, and when we come back, we will talk to both Pavel Wolak and Delvin Rodriguez. ESPN Friday Night Fights is presented by Corona Extra, proud sponsor of Friday Night Fights, and as always, encourages you to relax responsibly, and in part by Audi, Truth, in engineering and by one a day men's pro edge the multivitamin with more of what matters what a night in new york pavel wolak delvin rodriguez a majority decision gentlemen first off on behalf of all boxing fans thank you for those 10 rounds congratulations i asked to each of you what did you make of that evening uh, it was a oh man it was a tough fight man i, I give it the best to delvin man it was a really tough fight he really tested me i couldn't my eyes started closed, I couldn't really see much, you know? That's why I was trying to get inside and just keep my head in his chest so he couldn't have wrap the hook around, you know? Tough fight, though. Yeah, you know, it was a, like you said, it's a tough fight. Uh, I, I had no doubt it was going to be a tough fight, you know? I was uh, ready for it. I mean, I've been out of the rip for one year. Uh, you know, it took me a little bit to warm up. I got to say the truth, it took me a little bit to warm up. But he was never calling me, like, you know, like clean, hard punches at all. He was trying to talk me to the body. There was nothing. I was very relaxed. And, hey, you know, I think I did a great job, but, you know, that's the way it goes. I have a question to ask you that's coming from all the fans. Rematch? Yeah. Sure. Sure. I, I think yeah, it so. Have to, it have to be a rematch. We it's a great fight. I think I can speak for ESPN now, and usually they, I shouldn't be doing that, but I think I'm safe doing that. We'd love Mass to have you back. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It was our late and thank you guys for acting, behaving like fighters. And I got one other question for you. You wish you were heavyweights? I really do. <laughs> because Let I think you, you both would be heavyweight champ. Let me tell you something. If I was 6'3", I would definitely be a heavyweight. I got to tell you, if I was 6'3", I always tell my coach, if I was 6'3", I would go heavyweight. With your heart, with your determination, with you guys' style, with your commitment, I think you guys would probably beat Klitschko uh, if you were able to add on I'm about bigger. 70 pounds. Pavel, what does it take to fight through an injury like what you were dealing with with that right eye? Um... I mean, look, I wasn't really hurt, meaning the punches didn't bother me. My eyes just started swelling, and I couldn't really... It was giving me a little bit of a problem, I'm not going to lie. You know, I, I, I didn't want the fight to stop. That's why in the corner, every time they asked me, can you see? I'm like, yeah, I can see, man. Come on. You know, let's let keep the fight going. But uh, I just didn't want to disappoint my fans. To me, that's the most important thing. I don't want to walk out. Well, of course, I don't want to lose, but I don't want to disappoint. There's so many people that come up and watch me. So many people, as you can see, so many uh, uh, Polish people, so many American people, all kinds of people coming up and, and watching me. I don't want to disappoint them. I don't want them to hang their head and go home. Man, my, my boy, my, my friend, you know, lost. I, 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 I hate that. You know, you never once mentioned, and I'm not surprised because you both, the way you behaved all night long, you never once said anything about your eye, never once tried to use that in any kind of way. You remind me of a fighter from many years ago, Carmen Basilio, after he fought Sugar Ray Robinson, one of the greatest, if not the greatest fighter of all time in his second fight. His eye looked like yours. It was completely closed. And newspaper men said to him afterwards, they said, was it because your eye was closed? And he said, no, my other eye was good. There you go. That's how I felt. Gentlemen. And that's how you fought. That's thank how you, you fought. And that's how you fought. Spectacular evening. Congratulations. Thank you. And we will gladly see that rematch. Majority draw between Wolak and Rodriguez. Next week, Anthony Durrell, Kevin Engel. For Brian Kenny and Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Thanks for being with us. Coming up next, the World Series of Poker.